Canada, once the darling of the investment world in the recession, but now with oil prices down 50 percent, many are asking, is it time to sell Canada short? TD Economics discussed this topic in a recent article, and I have with me today Derek Bolton, Deputy Chief Economist at TD Bank Group. Derek, so what's the verdict? Did we see a lot of investors, of foreign investors especially, pulling out of Canada as the price has plunged? No, it, it is true. At the start of the year, a lot of concerns as oil kept losing ground. It was also a lot more focused on the some of the vulnerabilities, high household debt, mm -hmm. uh, overvalued housing markets, and that Canada had been the poster child of economic success up till then. All of a sudden, conferences are being held short Canada in, in places mm -hmm. in New York City and the like. So, uh, you know, we've looked at the data, and, and really we didn't see any kind of major investor pull out, uh, out of Canada, at least from a foreign perspective. Um, equity markets haven't done well, but that's been more of a general story in, Can in the world. Uh, bond markets have still attracted a lot of flows, particularly government bonds. We've seen a major uh, flow into net flow into uh, to government bonds. Yields in Canada are trading below that in the United States. That negative spread has been widening. And the Canadian dollar gains some stability around the 80 to 85 cent mark. So I guess the good news is that uh, we didn't see any uh, massive exodus. Still some concerns about where the economy may be headed, but uh, at least with oil prices rebounding, that's put some of these concerns to rest. Mm -hmm. Now let's look at a few different topics. Oil prices being a big one and, and the Bank of Canada uh, coming out and recognizing that in, in their outlook. How big is that and where do you see oil going? A little bit of that concern is, is backward looking. Uh, they've been uh, very concerned about low oil prices having a negative impact on the economy and uh, adding stress to, to household uh, balance sheets, uh, weaker jobs and income and the like. Um, prices have, have stabilized and uh, uh, in, in the bank's uh, financial stability report uh, this week, uh, you know, their focus is on the risks. And yeah, to the extent prices are still low, it's still a risk. But uh, uh, the good news is we've seen some recovery in oil prices. Uh, as, a, as a bank, as a department, we expect to see a further recovery. And I think uh, that should continue to alleviate uh, some concerns over oil prices going forward. Now, housing prices are always a, a big risk that is, is also talked about. And we haven't really seen that house price correction that has been expected by a lot of people. So what's going on there? And, 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 that's, and that's very true. If anything, uh, home prices have exceeded expectations uh, so far this year. Uh, the big surprise, I think, has been interest rates. Uh, you know, many had expected at the start of the year interest rates would begin at least to stabilize, if not to grind a bit higher. And if anything, in the first half of the year, we saw interest rates, at least market rates, fall further. Bond yields fell. Mortgage rates fell. The five-year uh, special rate fell by about a half a percentage point, And that's given more juice to a housing market, particularly the key markets of Toronto and Vancouver. Uh, and price growth has just continued to escalate. And, and that is a risk, certainly on the central bank's radar. It does suggest that the overvaluation in housing, if anything, continues to, to get a bit worse. And uh, we're not of the mind, it's, uh, we're headed for crisis, but uh, an overvaluation uh, closer to the top end of the 10 to 15% range, I think is reasonable. At the start of the year, we might have said that was closer to 10. So our view is that Going forward, we will see some of the uh, the price growth at least stabilize and begin to pull back because we've since seen bond markets reverse course. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised to see bond yields by the end of the year drift a bit higher, and that I think will be enough to cool uh, the jets of uh, at least reduce some of the affordability and bring bring price growth down uh, in Toronto and Vancouver. The rest of the market is quite stable. I think that's mm -hmm. important to point that this is really. A story more for the two, two, two big markets, but that's a challenge in and of itself because these are two large markets in Canada. So do you see household debt improving as well? Well, and, and it has begun to. It depends on which side you look at it. Uh, you know, again, this week we see evidence that uh, the debt-to-income ratio is, is still quite elevated. And uh, the good news is that the rate of accumulation of debt has continued to slow. It was growing at a double-digit rate uh, on a sustained basis. It's been slowing on a trend basis. But the debt to income ratio is still elevated. Um, you know, but that can be offset with some other uh, you know, more positive news. Net worth in Canada is still quite high. Uh, debt to asset ratios are low. Households actually, their balance sheets are, are OK. Uh, but the vulnerability is if the economy gets hit by a shock, say Greece, you know, things get uh, you know, as turbulence flow out of Greece and hits the economy hard at this time, mm -hmm. the vulnerability is, uh, is there on the household balance sheet. So very much a mixed story. 
Now, the U.S. obviously has a, a huge point to play. Do you see their, them being strong enough to pull us up? I do. Uh, the employment numbers of the U.S. last week, I think, were very promising. Uh, the U.S. still has some headwinds. The high dollar is holding back uh, the export sector. But, uh, you know, some of the weakness we've seen in the early part of this year, I do think is temporary. Some of it's due to just difficulty measuring output at the start of the year with some of the climate change that we've seen in, in recent years, and it's difficult to, to factor that into adjusting the data seasonally as they've had. So my, my view is, and the view of the department is, we're going to get a pretty good second half rebound out of the U.S., and, and that's going to help Canada. We really need it here because, you know, households are still facing constraints. We do need, uh, you know, the, the U.S. to breathe some life into uh, the export side of the economy here, and I think we'll see that. I think we'll get okay growth. Uh, in large part because of the U.S. And what about our currency? Look, you know, the U.S. story, I, I think, you know, the, the story I, I've been telling and, and one I'm comfortable with is that the Canadian dollar is probably going to fall further. Um, you know, it, uh, it's really going to be more of a U.S. story. I think as we move closer to a Fed rate, interest rate hike, and I think the recent data in the U.S. suggests it's going to be this year, They'll begin to lift off, uh, and the Bank of Canada, all signals are they're going to sit on their hands for a while. Mm -hmm. That's going to pull up the U.S. dollar and pull down most currencies, including the Canadian dollar, against it. So wouldn't be surprised to see the, the currency drift below 80 in the weeks to come and could get down to you know, the, the mid to, to high 70s uh, over the next uh, six months or so. Now, you also said that you think uh, Canadian bonds will outperform. What's causing that? You know, I, I, I think it's, it's a couple of things. I think, again, uh, you know, I have reason to think good investor flows into Canadian debt securities. Federal government has a very good, uh, very good fiscal record at the moment, not going to be generating a lot of new supply of debt. Um, the economy is going to hold it together. So I think part of it is going to be good, good foreign demand for Canadian bonds, keeping yields, keeping yields contained in Canada. Mm -hmm. But as the U.S. Uh, Fed raises rates, I can see U.S. yields... Uh, rise by more than Canada and widen that negative spread. Canadian yields are below that of the United States. I can see that negative spread widen it for longer term yields. So uh, part of it is just simply the fact that the U.S. Fed is going to be raising rates and that's going to be pulling up U.S. yields. All right. Thank you very much, Derek. Thank you. I've been joined today by Derek Bolton, Deputy Chief Economist, TD Bank Group. I'm Marianne Deveni. Thanks for watching.